Well, it's turning a little gray here in Foxborough, Mason. Uh, Maryland falls to Duke, 13 to eight. It was tough early, down six, nothing. And then Maryland roars back, it's eight, seven. I thought we had it. This is Wayne Viner. That's Mason, the intern. Bruce is away from the camera this afternoon. What'd you see out there? Not a lot that I liked for most of the game. Maryland with a strong push in the third quarter, but just couldn't keep it up. Duke just had what everybody said. They had a lot of firepower and just it just turned into a few saves, and then it was just too much for the Terps at the end. It, it was a little <laughs> too much. Uh, for some reason, uh, I guess because you get to the final four, and at this point, some ways you actually expect to uh, win the game. And and certainly when it got to 8-7, to seven, I expected to win the game. When you're talking about Maryland and Coach Tillman and what this program is about, you get to the point in the game where it's 8-7 to seven and you just expect them to win. A lot of times when Maryland has lost, it's they go down and they stay down. Today they fought back, and when they start to fight back, you just expect them to win. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. This team was not going to fold. I was tweeting. I was texting. They weren't going to give up. 6 nothing. It wasn't too much to overcome. It, it ended up being too much, but they could have could have maybe but it didn't happen lose to duke of all people 13 to 8 in the final four. First game was a blowout yale all over albany yeah. so it's going to be yale and duke this is yale's first trip to the national championship of course duke has been here before but it's always sad when it's the last day of the season it, either it was going to be today or it was going to be on Monday, win or lose. But it's the last time around for Dan Morris, Connor Kelly, and some of the other guys that we've uh, really grown to enjoy covering. What's your thought on that? Just it's really an end of an era for these guys. Last year, of course, you lost Rambo, Heacock. But now you're really seeing it almost feels like the end of that class with Morris and Tim Rotance being here for five years. And... It's a sad day, but at the same time, these are the guys that have brought this program, the championship, and really have, I mean, these, they're five out of five Final Fours. They're, right. They did about as well as you could, even though you only end in the five years with the one title. Yeah, well, one title beats what they've done for a while. We'd like to thank our sponsors for this season uh, that, that ends today. Uh, Viner Forgates, nonprofit services. Meyer Consulting, as always. And, of course, thanks to Bruce for all he's done and uh, for the university for all the access that they have given us. Uh, we talk about the stats. To me, it doesn't matter that much. What mattered today was that this season, and as you said, a bit of this era has ended. It's in good hands with uh, Bubba Fairman. It's in good yeah. hands with Jared Bernhardt, uh, Curtis Corley, etc. cetera. But uh, it's great to be here at the Final Four again, but unfortunately was not our day. Uh, final thoughts? There's really not much to say. They they had the chance, but it just didn't work out today. But to me, it kind of explained the only way to beat this team this year was to get out to an early lead, and Duke did it, and props to them. They played a really good game today. Even though it was Duke, yes, they did. They were really good. So we will see you for football and maybe a little bit of Caps stuff down the road. This is Wayne Viner. And I'm intern Mason, and hey, September 1st can't come fast enough. FedEx Field, Texas, can't wait. We'll see you there.